sold for a penny, meaning they're very insignificant. They're cheap, unimportant. And if one of them is flitting around on a branch and suddenly dies, nothing in the world could be less important than that. It doesn't happen without God. And the argument is, if God so rules the details of the world down to the smallest thing like the fall of a bird out of the sky, he hasn't dropped the ball at any point in your life. One hair turns white by God's design. Number ten, finally, perhaps the sweetest of all, the blessing of being valued by God. Verse 31. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. God does not despise his children. He values his children. And there are two reasons. If you, if you need help because you don't feel valuable, which, which you're not in yourself... If you need help processing that emotionally, which most of you do because you, you were not valued by your parents the way you might have liked to have been, and so you, you still are laboring under the burden of that feeling. The first reason God values his children is because in union with Christ, the perfection of his son is imputed to us. That's the rock solid foundation of his valuing us. So when your days are good and horrible, good and horrible, good and horrible, his valuing does not get good and horrible, good and horrible because it's rooted in Christ, not you. However, that's not the whole story. Because of that, we are enabled. Because we know he He is affirming us, accepting us, delighting in us, loving us as we are in Christ because we're united to him by faith, we now have the liberty to begin to fight real sin in our lives and overcome bad habits and become a little better. And God delights in every micro step we make in Holy Spirit given holiness. C.S. Lewis said one time, it was, it was quite a an impact for me when I read it in college. He said, God is easy to please and hard to satisfy. I don't think I had the theological framework to make too much sense out of that, but now I think I have it because I have both justification and sanctification. God is hard to satisfy because he's perfect. And we must be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. And we never will be. And therefore he sends Christ to cover all of our imperfection. But he's easy to please. Because his heart is totally for us as our Father. And as we make any incremental progress in holiness or love. He is delighting in what he makes and what he sees. Fear not therefore you are of more value than many sparrows. So go. How does God call people to give their lives in missions? He does it among many other influences by the mysterious and wonderful awakening of fear conquering desire. He awakens fear conquering desire. And that desire ebbs and flows for a while it goes up, it goes down, and over time, because God's providence, it just becomes inescapable. And you find yourself led in a path of obedience. The desire cannot be shelved. It's not just me anymore. I'm being carried along by God, and he is working this in me in a way that is divine. A calling is on my life. For many of you, and now I'm, I'm going to be addressing all the campuses, those of you downtown on Sunday morning and those of you north on Sunday morning, I want all of you to listen because this invitation that I'm about to 
issue, uh, I will issue to all the campuses. And then uh, at the North Campus, I believe uh, Eric is going to be there. And at the downtown campus Sunday morning, um, Kenny Stokes is going to be there to wrap it up like I will do tonight. So everybody be, be listening to this last moment of explanation. Over time, say for 20 years, 50 years, God has been working in your life, awakening desires and a sense that missions is out there somewhere. It's going to be out there somewhere. I'm going to go this direction someday. And this service perhaps has simply brought you to the place where you say, I really believe I believe that now. I believe that. I may be wrong. Something may happen to change it. But I believe that I am moving towards missions at least for a year of my life or more. Others of you might have come into one of these services and simply had no intention whatsoever of being awakened to such a thing. And it happened anyway. And your sense is a remarkable unsettledness right now and a sense of... I really think God is doing something to awaken in me this kind of desire that others are feeling confirmed. Those are the two groups of people that I would like to invite to come and stand. And, and we'll, when, once you're here, I'll pray for you. Then we're going to sing. And uh, there will be people to give you a card to introduce you to and get you connected with the Nurture program if you want to be. But that's it. So let me pray and then we'll invite people to come. Father, uh, at the North Campus and the Downtown Campus Sunday morning and here tonight, I ask that you would do that mysterious quickening, awakening, confirming work to cause people to say, yes, yes, I believe he's leading in this direction and I want to say yes, I want to get prayer from Pastor John or Pastor Kenny or Pastor Eric and so I want to I want to move on this Lord bring them and do a, a profound work in this moment I pray in Jesus name Amen